Welcome to episode 25 of North's Myths, Legends, and Folktales. My name is Mylinda Butterworth. Today, we learn how Freya convinces the giantess Hindla to reveal the ancestry of her lover Ota in the myth Hindla's poem. The giantess Hindla was asleep. She was growling in her gloomy cave, and it wasn't a pleasant sound. Freya and her boar stood in the cave's mouth listening. Then Freya called out, Hindla, my friend, Hindla, my sister, wake up, come out of your hole in the hill. The growling gave way to the sound like a bitch howling at the moon. The giantess was yawning. It's dark in there, and it's getting dark out here, Freya called. And we must go to Valhalla together. We must win Odin's favor. He's always open-handed with his followers. He gave a helmet and a coat of mail to Hermod, and he gave a sword to Sigmund. Now, there was only silence within. Hindla was listening. To some he gives gold, to others glory in battle, said Freya. To many he gives wisdom, and to many word skill. Fair winds to the sailor, craft to the poet, and a stout heart to many a hero. Freya paused. I'll pay court to Thor as well, she called out, and I'll ask him always to look kindly on you and support you, although he has little love for giant women. A large, unwholesome face loomed out of the gloom, and Hindla slouched out of the cave. She was dressed in something like sacking. Bring one of your wolves from its lair, said Freya, and let him and my boar run in the harness. My boar cannot carry us both or hurry on the way to Asgard. He's a marvel, and I don't want to ride him into the ground. Hindla looked at the goddess with beady eyes. Nonsense, she said. Pretense and promises. You can't even look me straight in the eye. Well, I'll tell you straight. That's no boar. That's your lover, young Otar, the son of Einstein. You're riding your lover on the road to Valhalla. And you, said Freya, are full of wild ideas. My lover beneath me on the road to Valhalla? This is my battle boar, Hildusvini. His golden bristles show him the way in the dark. He was made by Master Smith, the dwarves Dane and Nabi. Hindla said nothing. She just sniffed and started back away into her cave. Freya would not give up and would not go away. She wrangled, she wheedled and cajoled, she threatened, she made promises, and in the end, she won the giantess's half-hearted agreement that they should journey to Asgard together. Little choice, said the giantess, if I want any peace. As Freya had suggested, the giantess rode a wolf, and the goddess mounted her boar. The two animals ran in harness, and at last the travelers reached the gates of Valhalla. They reigned in beside Valgrind, the outer gate, and the dear Hydron, who was grazing there, water streaming from his horns, bounded away to safety. Freya and Hindla dismounted and walked down to the banks of the torrent Thund. Let us talk of the ancestry of two heroes, Freya said. Otar the young and Angontir, two men fathered by gods. Hindla smiled. That half-smile of one who knows the truth always comes out in the end. Otar raised an altar to me, cried the goddess. He built up the stones, and now they have turned to glass. He reddened the altar again and again with the blood of oxen. Otar always puts his faith in goddesses. Freya took a step towards the giantess. Now tell me the names of the ancients and their kindreds. Which men are Sejoidungs, which are Skilfings, Othlings, and Yilfings? Who are the firstborn and who are the highborn and the most noble men in Midgard? Hindla looked at Freya. Then she looked at the boar and took a deep breath. You, O Tar, she said, are the son of Einstein, and he was the son of Alf the Old. Alf sprang of Ulf, Ulf of Saivari, and Saivari's father was Svan the Red. 
the boar had pricked up his ears and was listening carefully. "'Your mother,' said the giantess, "'adorned with gleaming gold bracelets, was the priestess Heldi. "'Her father was Frodi, and her mother Friot. "'Her lineage was peerless. "'Friot's mother was Hildegan, who was the daughter of Svava and Skakung. "'They, all your kinsmen, Otar, you fool!' That's a lot to remember. Do you want to hear yet more? The boar was listening, and so was Freya. Hildegan's husband was Kiatul, the giantess resumed. So he was your mother's grandfather on her mother's side. Frodi came from Kerry, and Hulf sprang of Hild. Nana, the daughter of Nokvi, came next, and her son married your father's sister. That lineage is long and even longer, and they're all your kinsmen. Oh, Tar, you fool! Ilself and Olsef, the sons of Omod, whose wife was Skirhold, the daughter of Skikil, they should be counted among the noblest of heroes, and they're all your kinsmen. Oh, Tar, you fool! Then said the giantess. There are twelve berserks, Hervard and Yarvard, Rani and Ongantir, Bui and Brahmi, Bari and Rifnir, Tind and Tirfing and two Haddings. These were the sons of Armgrin and Afura, born long ago on the islands of Bonso. Howling and foaming in frenzy, they left a trail of terror and leaped like wildfire over land and water. And they're all your kinsmen, Otar, you fool. The giantess narrowed her eyes and raised a horny finger. Long, long ago, all the sons of your moonwreck were given to the gods in sacrifice. Now your moonwreck was one of Sigurd's kinsmen. Mark my words carefully. Sigurd, who could stand against all, slay all the dragon Fafirner. The hero Sigurd was Vulsong's grandson, and his mother was Yortis of the Rodings. Her father was Alami of the Oathlings, and thee who are all your kinsmen, Otar, you fool. The sons of Yoki and Grimhild were Gunnar, and Hogi, and his daughter was their sister Gudrun, and Sigurd's wife. The third son, Gothorm, was not fathered by Yoki, and they're all your kinsmen, Otar, you fool. Vidna's father was Jorvad, and Haki was the best of his sons. Harald, war tooth, was the son of Ode, and her husband Rorek, the ring gatherer. Ode, the profound, was Avar's daughter, but Krathbard was the father of her son Ranvir, and they're all your kinsmen, Otar, you fool. Freya looked at the giantess in triumph. Otar, and Ongantir have made a wager, she said. They have staked their whole inheritance on the matter of their lineage. Now give my boar the memory beer so that when Otar and Ongantir meet three days hence, he'll remember your fine recital, every word of it. We must protect Einstein's well-earned wealth, his family heirloom, so that the young hero can enjoy them. The giantess opened her rotting, cavernous mouth and yawned. Go away, she said. I want to sleep again. I'm not doing you any more favors. She gave Freya a weathering look. My noble goddess, she said. You leap around at night like Hydrun cavorting with a herd of goats. Freya slowly raised her arms. I will girdle you with flame so that you cannot leave this place without catching fire. Hindla laughed in contempt. You've gone and run to old, she said. You who always loved you and many another has wormed his way under your apron. My noble goddess, you leap around at night like Hydrum, cavorting with a herd of goats. 
there was a fire in Asgard dancing in the air. A band of flame, a quivering halo, surrounded the giantess. Her limbs tightened. She pressed her arms against her side. Flames about me, cried the giantess. The earth is on fire and I must pay for the full price or forfeit my life. Hindla flinched as the girdle began to tighten. Otar's draught of memory beer, she called. Take it, it's full of vendom. It will bring him to an evil end. Stuff, said Freya. Nonsense. It is you who are full of bitterness and rancor. Your threats will do no harm, though. The goddess was smiling and douce. She trailed her fingers down the boar's back. Otar will drink nothing but the best. If I get my way with the gods, Otar will prosper. And here is where I end my tale for today. But I'll be back with more tales. Many more tales. Until then, my friends, enjoy the journey.